Hey everyone, it looks like we are live. I hope everyone is having a great week. Thank you so much for hanging out today. We are live for the, um, probably the finale of the live streams with this particular painting. So I'm excited about that, kind of bittersweet. But um, winter is coming to a close, so the painting of Persephone in winter is coming to a close. So that's probably fitting, right? So I don't see anyone in the chat room yet, but that's okay. You know, I know uh, people are busy and everything like that, but the show must go on. That's so important. So without further ado, we are going to work on this particular painting. And I'm going to be doing some paintbrush techniques and some airbrush techniques. So a little of both. So that's going to be good. So looking at her face, I see that it's a little more orange than uh, on the pink that I have it. So we're going to work on that. That's going to be the first thing on our agenda. So we have our wet palette by Redgrass. We have our paper. Uh, by by Canson, we have our airbrushes by Badger, and we have our paints by Createx. Those are all friends of the channel, you know, so I always give them, you know, a profile of the live streams. Hey, Mr. Brad Mummery, great to see you all the way from Manitoba. How are you today, sir? I'm so glad you're here. Michael McLong, how's it going? Great to see you, sir. All the way from Baltimore. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much, guys, for hanging with me. I really appreciate you. So, uh, I'm going to look for that orange color. I'm going to go into my paint mixing uh, techniques here. And so, I'm just going to open up that particular painting. Uh, let's see. So we'll close this. So I want to come in with a nice orange color, but I don't want it to be too saturated, right? We, we can't do that. So, okay. So looking for our image that we work from right here. So great that Michael and Brad are here. I really appreciate you guys so much. So right now I'm going to kind of look for that kind of orangey color. And yes, it is orange to start with. So we're going to get our orange. And is it a red orange or is it a pure orange? That is the question. And I would say it's it's a pure orange. And I'm just going to start this off. And then we're going to look and see. It's a nice light color. So we're going to mix. We're going to mix a light colored orange. So that's what we're looking for. Hey there. Great to see you guys come in. Mr. Mark, how's it going? Great to see you. How's everything, sir? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're feeling better. That is so amazing. Mr. Ryan, how's it going from Canada? Great to see you. And we have Dave DeBug Gregory. How's it going from Oklahoma? Great to see you. And so that is great. Thanks, guys, for coming in. And, you know, and Patty all the way from Illinois. How's it going? Mark, where are you from again? It's been a while since I've seen you. Uh, but I appreciate you. I think it's the Midwest. So, uh, let's see. So, so glad to see you guys. You guys are all amazing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, while you guys are talking among yourselves, and so that is music to my ears, I'm going to find the proper color to mix. Okay. Wow, Ryan, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. Great to see you, and thank you so much for your wonderful uh, 
Support and friendship. I appreciate you. Did you try the wet palette? I know it arrived. Have you given it a shot? I know you're going to love it. That I know. And let's see here. Okay, so I have the information I need for this painting, for this color. Let's see if this works out. Ah, so cool. You guys are so great. Mr. Bobby, how's it going all the way from, from Massachusetts? So we got uh, Mark from Michigan and Bobby from Massachusetts. We got the M's down. That is so cool. And Ryan from Canada. Ryan said he tried it out a bit. He's thinking the instructions... Uh, ask for too much water. Yes, that's exactly what I what I mentioned, right? I say they say two ounces. I say like an ounce and a quarter or something like that. Not not even close to what they're mentioning. You know, we we don't like painting overly saturated, right? So that's probably you're thinking the same as I am. I like the dry brush technique, so it's not over overpowering mr roy how's it going so great to see you my friend how you doing so roy all the way from new jersey we got some great people here so thanks so much for making my wednesday guys and girls patty of course all the way from illinois it's always super to see you And let's see, I think this looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this particular color. How are you guys with the rags? Does your rags look crazy like mine? Like I'm saving them. Like what am I waiting for to throw it out, you know? That's, that's pretty much it. So what great, maybe two ounces for stiffer acrylics. I like two ounces, you know. And then, you know, after I have it under, then I may have a spray bottle and spray it and then just slowly even it out. And if I need to add a little water, I'll add a little water. Like today I added just a little water because we had some dry spots here. And then you just spread it out and let it kind of, you know, soak up. But one thing I wanted to show you, which was really interesting, look at this, how the wet palette holds your moisture. See the beading? I'm going to show you. See the beading of moisture that it holds? So great. And that's the beauty of the whole thing, Ryan. You know, when you're working uh, in acrylics, it is just, like, amazing. Uh, the paints last forever. It's already saved me money, you know. Rick, how's it going? Great to see you all the way from Canada. So glad you're here. Patty says, do I use tap water or distilled water? Confession, I do use tap water. I should use distilled water, but I keep forgetting when I'm at the supermarket. But I do know distilled water is much better. Oh, I may use this water from time to time, and that's kind of like still water, distilled water, right, guys? Kind of. So, you know, but yeah. And I hear like a little bit of copper. That's what Mr. Leahy told me. So I have to listen to him. Okay, so I have this, and I'm going to dilute it even a little bit more with some 4011. So thanks, everybody. I hope everyone is having a really healthy, happy, happy week, you know. And if it's not happy, I'm going to pray for you guys that it is much happier from here on out. This We all have rough weeks, right, you know. But... You know, we, we know they're going to get better. Gary, how's it going? How's everything? All the way from Indianapolis. Let me see if I got that correct. Like the Indianapolis Speedway. I'm not sure. Um, I'm probably wrong. And, oh, look at this. Uh, Bobby says it still doesn't have all the mineral deposits and stuff. Yeah, that can go bad, right? So, well said. Definitely. Definitely well said. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yes, that's right. 
Oh my god, I was only off by a couple of thousand miles. Well, maybe 1500 miles, right? <laughs> I'm going to get it, Gary. I'm going to I'm going to remember it. It just takes a while to for the synapse to connect, you know? But I really appreciate you hanging out. Thank you so much for spending your Wednesday, part of your Wednesday with me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I always have a test paper because I don't want to test it on there, especially... Oh, that's a really nice orangey color. So I think we may be on to something. Let's see. Okay, so we have this orangey color, and I'm going to get my reference. You always want to do the one-second rule, everybody. We all know that. Ha oh, my God, Mr. Dave, thank you so much for the support and friendship. I really appreciate it. Yes, definitely. Got to get some new rags. <laughs> thank you always for your friendship and your support and hanging out with us, Dave. It's, it's just... Uh, it just means so much to me, and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, it's just incredible, and I'm just so so glad to have met you, sir, and to be your friend. So thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, Dave, you know, he's a great friend to the channel, and, you know, he just helps the channel keep going, and that just makes me excited and happy to, to know him. And Gary says he'll change his image to a Hershey bar. <laughs> that would be good. That would definitely bring it on home, right? So that's funny, Gary, definitely. And uh, so very, very cool. I appreciate you so much. So now I know I have the right color. And now I'm going to... I'm about three inches away. Now, why am I not close? So here's the thing. If I'm close, that means that when you're closer, it's more powerful and more concentrated. So if I'm close, I'm going to get much more blotchiness. And I'm not looking for texture right now. So what I need to do is to increase my texture. So just like when a woman puts on makeup and she has, you know, she's not going real close, you know. Oh my God, Mr. Gary, thank you so much for the super chat, sir. That means so much to me. And just thank you for your support and your friendship and especially for hanging out with me on this Wednesday night and when you come in, the great comments and everything. Um, it's, it's, uh, it just really reinforces why I'm doing this and just trying to connect with you guys and girls and and really really booster the airbrush community and that's what I I hope to do all the time and people like you and Dave and everyone everyone here you do that so thank you so much Mr. Gary and uh, and I'm promised to work on remembering Hershey Pennsylvania and I've been there that's the funny thing you know I was there once, but it was really great. I really thought it was like a Sunday morning, and I was traveling from Lancaster, Lancaster, to uh, Lancaster back to New York, and it was really nice. And we stopped at a Turkey Hill, and we got gas, so that I remember. And they had good coffee. <laughs> Mr. Oz, how you doing all the way from the Atlanta area? How you feeling, sir? So I know uh, Mr. Oz is, is, is feeling better, and I hope you're further down the road of uh, recovery, and I've been praying for that. You're a good guy, and I want you to be feeling good and healthy. So thank you so much for hanging out on this Wednesday, you know, um, I tell you, I look forward to our Wednesdays, and, you know, I can't, I can't think of a better way to spend a Wednesday evening than hanging out with like-minded friends and talented artists, I mean, it's just the best, you know, 
And I see everyone's reaching out, talking to Mr. Oz, so that is great. Thank you for that. This is such a welcoming place and a place where we can learn about stuff, which is fantastic. So what's interesting, this orange is lighter than the hair over here, and it's kind of uh, becoming white. So that's interesting. Because remember, when orange goes over a lighter color, it's actually going to combat blue, and it's going to come out white. So that's really quite fascinating. I'm just going to lighten this area up right there. And I may darken that. Oh, my God, Mr. Michael, thank you so much for that super chat. Yes. So you guys know um, I need to go from new rags to riches. <laughs> thank you so much for your friendship, my friend. Thank you coming, coming and hanging out and being such a positive part of the community. Um, you know, I, I love talking to Michael during the week, you know, on Facebook and stuff and love seeing his work, how it's progressing. And he's really working hard and you can really see the growth in his work. So it's really wonderful. And it's just, uh, I'm so glad you're here and your comments. And I can't think of the channel without you, Michael. I really can't. So I just want to say thanks, especially for hanging out and and making Wednesday so great and just being such an important part of this community. Now right now, I'm not, I'm not feeling that I'm getting any kind of uh, color out of this. I am. It's just maybe I need to raise the air pressure just a little bit. So when you raise the air pressure or the pressure with the pack valve that means when you pull back it comes out a little bit sooner right so that's all that means and so we're just going to now also like what i was mentioning before when women put on their their makeup if you see them ever do it um they're a good distance away because they want an even coat and learning from that. So if I want a nice even coat and make it look like her complexion, I have to make sure that I'm further enough away for me to have that effect, right? So that's so important. And we're just moving around and uh, maybe I'll darken up a little bit, but you guys are all just super amazing and thanks so much You know from the bottom of my heart being so supportive and you know Been a rough it's been a rough couple of weeks believe it or not <laughs> on Sunday I came down with the stomach flu or the stomach virus whatever you want to call it and that was rough, but I still had my classes. I didn't, I didn't uh, postpone any of my classes because it's just so much fun, you know, talking about airbrushing. So right here was a little harsh. So I came in with this orange so you see it's like an orangey color, right? So orange and, and a light gray actually will kind of, you know, become a white on a darker area. And that's what we're doing right now, which is really great. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's important to keep moving around and keep going from paintbrush techniques to airbrush techniques and have a kind of fluidity about it but what I want you to do is never get impatient right always make sure that you just let it evolve and sometimes you gotta ruin an area not ruin an area but mess up an area so you can come back right so like right here I didn't like you know so I actually 
lightened it with that orange mixture. And I put that orange here in the face and I'm very happy with that. So that is good. And what I'm going to do now is uh, let's see if we could start doing some paintbrush techniques in her hair, right? So I'm going to go back and see exactly what would be a good color for her hair. I don't want to arbitrarily get a color. I want to find a color using, you know, good techniques. So basically I'm going to, I'm going to be working with the Createx opaque line, which is really interesting. Have you guys worked with the Createx? Uh, are these the opaque colors? Yes, the Createx opaque colors. So, and this one is the red orange, which I like. I do like the red orange. And this one is open, so I'm just going to put a little bit on my palette here. Dwayne, how's it going? San Luis de Obispo. How are you, sir? Go Mustangs, not banana slugs. Thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. Hanging out with you on Wednesdays is always great because you are, you and Steve Leahy are the, you and Steve Leahy, Scott McKay, you are the, the three amigos of, of Wicked Paint. So you being here and then when Mr. Leahy can make it, it's just a learning experience. So thank you for that and thank you so much for your generous super chat. I really, really appreciate you, sir. That is just great. And like I say, you guys just, I'm always floored by the support. And if you knew just how much that it just gives me a boost, it's scary being a full-time artist, as you all know. And, you know, it keeps you up at night sometimes, but, you know, I trust in God, and, and I know I'm doing the right thing, and these Wednesday nights really make me feel like I am doing the right thing, so thank you guys, thank you for your friendship and hanging out with me, it is not anything that I take lightly in any way, and thanks in advance for your, your knowledge that you're going to impart on us tonight, uh-oh, Almost spilled my cup. All right, so now I am going to bring some water over here. You never want to cross water over your painting, even though I just did that, you know? Let me, th let me be the example of what not to do sometimes. Let's see. So I admire, you know, other artists doing live streams as well. Uh, Steve Leahy. Uh, does his live streams. I haven't been able to make it the last couple of weeks, but, you know, I will, f you know, everything's sort of uh, calming down, not getting back to normal, but calming down, and so definitely don't miss Steve Leahy's live streams if you can, just super information, you know, and on Tuesdays you have you know, Mr. Bill Sneegan, just unbelievable, just incredible. So, you see how I messed up the hair, but I wanted to get, you know, that orange in there. So, sometimes you got to break an egg to make an omelet, you know, as long as you can go back and fix it, right? That's all that's, that's needed. And, oh, Michael says his Tech Tuesdays was good that I watched today. So tell me about the Tech Tuesday. What what was it? I got to check it out. Yeah, I love his Tech Tuesdays. So cool. And we'll just move this over. Sometimes I have to increase the liquidity. I'm not talking about stocks and bonds and assets, but the, the liquid, the flow of the paint. One day I would love to talk about stuff like that. 
have a reason to talk about stuff like that. <laughs> oh, uh, Michael said that Mr. Leahy showed how he did the spoke. Oh, yeah, that is great. Very cool. And we're just bringing this down. So as I'm darkening this, we're bringing the, uh, to the forefront, the, her ear and giving uh, some nice luminous qualities to her ear. So remember, it's not the color, but what's next to it that super defines it. You know, that's the, the main thing, is what's next to it. So you see, we did some paintbrush technique, and now we're doing some airbrush technique and going back and forth, which is really important. Let me make some me a little smaller. Uh, yeah, definitely. So this way I can see the painting as I'm working on it on the computer. So a quick question out there. Uh, let me see if I can actually do this. This is going to be interesting. Let's see. Engage with my audience. I'm going to do a poll, okay? And the question I'm going to put up. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll just say you. We're all artists here, and I'm gonna ask. Uh, do you use a PC or laptop next to your work area for reference? Okay. So here's the poll. It's going to be a regular yes and no, and let me make sure I put a question mark. Okay, so there's the poll, guys, and you all let me know. Uh, we'll see, so feel free to answer. It's just a quick question, and so that would be cool. So I personally, as you know, I'm very tech savvy, so I definitely use a... Uh, computer several computers uh, next to my easel that's a pretty important thing for me uh, you know I've always been a little bit of a tech junkie you know especially doing live streams and everything wow so here we go we have some I'm gonna check on it so we have right now 67% says yes 33% says no so that's cool so great information so love it and that's great okay so we're going to keep an eye on that oh wow it's kind of evening out to 57 percent is yes and 43 percent is no great information and we're just going to why you guys are answering that question so I love the fact that we could put polls up and kind of see what you all are thinking, what we all are thinking as a community, right? So that's great. And let's see, uh, Michael says, oh, I see you're using the brush that I bought today. That's right, my friend. Great minds think alike, Michael. So Michael and I bought the same brush. Uh, it's the set from Hobby Lobby. I did have the, yep. It came out of this zipper pouch and $5.99. It's fantastic. These brushes are great. And, you know, they do what they're supposed to. And that's it, you know. And if it breaks or gets weird, you keep it and use it as a funny brush or something. Ryan says, I use a reference from my phone quite often. That basically counts. So, so... Ryan, if you use your phone or your iPad, that would be a yes. So that's cool. Or even your Android tablet. So great stuff there, Ryan. Um, yeah, so right now we're at 57% yes, 43% no. And if anyone said no, is there a reason for it? Or it's just your workflow? Love to hear. Uh, 
and just putting in some dark. So when you're putting in the darks of the hair, you definitely want to uh, be able to make sure that none of the hairs are equidistant or the same size. That's so important. So you, you know, the way hair goes, it kind of starts and then stops. It doesn't continue like spaghetti. It will st it'll stop and then it will start again, like right here. And that's basically how it goes. And then when you do that, you get more of a reality because you're not necessarily painting the hair exactly like the photograph, right? What you're doing is getting the nature of the hair, right? You want the nature of what you're painting. You know, it's character, their characteristics, and that's important. And Dwayne says, I said no because of a way you worded it. Oh, I see. <laughs> no problem, Dwayne. Uh, well, I understand, yes. Yeah, so basically, uh, you know, if you use uh, an Android, Android tablet or your phone or... Those are, those are like computers, so you definitely could say yes for that, guys. And uh, let's see, Michael says, I usually make a copy on my printer and have it next to it. That's a great way to work, definitely. Now, one thing is, uh, with my uh, color mixing program, the reason why I asked is that you would need either your laptop or your Android, uh, your, your laptop or an Android phone or tablet to actually do it, or a desktop. You would have to have it near your work area because we're gonna be using technology to get the exact color. So we're at 67% yes, so that's really cool. Dwayne says he considers a computer something with a hard drive, not an app-driven device. That's very important. That's a that's a very good point of view. I could see that. Um, and Michael says that way I spill paint. Hopefully it's on that copy. That's true. You can always make another copy, right? That's very true. And you see now what we're doing is we're just getting the nature. Of, of her hair. So we're putting in the darkest darks right now and we're setting up some of the lighter colors. But you see I mix the the, the red the red orange with black. So I wasn't using black because if I use black it'll be too strong. So that's important. And Dave says he has dedicated the CPU in a dedicated CPU in the studio with an adjustable monitor on the wall helps with the following tutorials and online sessions. It's so true, right? Um, right, Dave? I mean, I started early. I would say back in 1999, I started using the computer. I was one of the first ones because I was a computer geek and an artist at the same time. So I would take the JPEGs and blow them up and everything like that and work for them. But now with video and everything, it's even more important with online courses and classes. I definitely agree. And uh, Mr. Uh, Dave says he used hard copies for reference. Oh, yeah. So if you can use both of them, that's even greater. You know, more information, I always say. And Michael says... He doesn't want to spill paint. Don't want to spill paint on your computer. That's for sure. And. Oh, look at that. A Commodore 64. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually put a JPEG on that one, right? That's that's old school. Oh, my God. My first computer was a 486, which, you know. I think I got my first computer in 1994, 90, yeah, 94. And I'll tell you, it really just changed my life. And, you know, I was a little bit of a, well, I was, I consider myself a latecomer to YouTube, but I did my first YouTube in March of 2008. So that's quite an, quite an old school, uh, youtuber 
But I did go through a divorce and everything kind of went a little crazy for me, you know? So that was, uh, and then that kind of slowed me down. And I still did YouTube videos here and there, but I really came back in earnest in 2016, 2017, and then I just didn't look back from there, you know? And that was so important to just not look back and say to myself, I'm going all the way with this. It's been a rocky road, you know? It really has. The Commodore 64, wasn't that by Tandy? Uh, Radio Shack used to sell that, right? I'll tell you, uh, computers, you know, has really affected the art world in big ways, you know? I really feel in big ways computers has infected the art, affected, not infected, but infected, no, affected the art world in so many ways and it's doing it even more today I find you know with the advent of AI um, which is really important chat GPT and all of that stuff but back in 2008 I really started putting building computers so anyone here used to build computers in the old day? Oh, Patty said that my color wheel video on YouTube was great. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh, that reminds me. There's a, thank you so much for that, Patty. There's a link in the description. And in the description field, uh, there's a link for a free t PDF on some information on how to use the color wheel to improve your airbrush art. And that's totally free. That's free to you from me. And check that out. And that's great. Some great information I compiled for you. And I think I'm going to have uh, some free information next week, I think, uh, that I'll impart in a PDF. And that's going to be, uh, they're having fun upstairs. Uh, yes, if you hear any noises. <laughs> uh, so. It's going to be a free PDF on how to make money, uh, five ways to make some money to help pay for your art supplies, uh, you know, with your airbrush. So that's going to be exciting. And I know a lot of you know some of the ways already, but I think I have a few ways that, you know, I'd like to share with you all that, you know, maybe might be new and a new opportunity for you all. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. I want you guys to succeed, guys and girls to succeed. That's why I came out with the color wheel video. Anything that's going to make your airbrush life more fun, I'm all for it. So that's what I'm really working towards with these free PDFs. Michael says, I thought you were talking about a musical group in 64 <laughs> oh like the Commodores yes that's funny yeah you know I was like computers was almost like art for me when I first started you know really getting exposed to computers I was just hooked and I think the internet really hooked me now, in the early days, there was these things called bulletin boards. And I'm, if anyone's old as me, maybe I'm the oldest here, but uh, the bulletin boards, does anyone remember them? They were really fantastic. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, before the Internet became a place of kind of dark, scary figures out there, it was all geeks like me and guys and girl geeks and I was living in Orlando at the time. Oh, Mr. Dwayne remembers them. So, yeah, so they had a bulletin board in Orlando, and it was all the people in Orlando who were on the Internet. And it was a small group, mind you. This was like 1994. It was a small, tiny group. And we would all meet at a diner. 
and there was like, like 12 of us that were like regulars and all ages and it was so great because you know I was in my 20s and I met people of all ages and it was just such a great way to meet people and I remember I used to work at a camera store and people would at the Florida Mall and people would come to the camera store from the bulletin boards and it was just a the internet was a community a lot like what we have now you know and it was just it was just it was just a an innocent time you know and maybe we're going to say that one day about YouTube right we're going to say it's an innocent time before something happened and I hope not because you know YouTube is a a really nice a nice community and good communities like this could happen you know hey mr mike deloach all the way from the uh the atlanta area how's it going mike says he was on bulletin boards and muds and telnetting between that edu sites back when it was yes i remembered so the green crt machines were just after i arrived but i used to use telnet and i'll tell you when you knew how to use Telnet, you can go anywhere and see things that, you know, different sites and different colleges, you can go into those colleges, whether I was supposed to or not, but I used to do that. But yeah, Telnet was really interesting. And you could download back then if you wanted to share a file, you would both get on Telnet. And you would transfer the files that way, huh? Wasn't that great? But computers is a lot like art. There's a lot of, uh, you know, that whole kind of, uh, you know, kind of small group of enthusiasts, right? You know, like, and definitely airbrush. So airbrush art, which I, I think that's one of the reasons when I started going into the airbrush world, all of a sudden, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with that kind of, you know, left of center, just, out, just on the outside of the normal art world. Everyone was just really cool and approachable. And that's... And that's when I came into the airbrush world around 2009, right? You're about 2008, 2009. And everyone was just so forthcoming and approachable. And Mr. Mr. Drew Blair would answer my emails and he would answer my technical questions. And he didn't have to. Uh, you know, Steve Driscoll, the late Steve Driscoll one time. He just IM'd me and told me how much he loved my one of my first airbrush paintings and to keep it up. I mean, these are guys that didn't have to talk to me at all. And they were just really cool. Cass Fuller would call me on the phone and give me advice. That doesn't happen in the art world, you know, in the regular art world. And that's kind of like in computers, you know, and uh, then came the forums, yes, Dwayne, and um, yeah, so it was such an innocent time, a lot like the way the airbrush world is, you know, yeah, the airbrush were kind of rough around the edges at times, and you know, but the airbrush world is still innocent, it's not jaded and, you know, nose up in the air like the regular art world. And that is the real charm of the airbrush world. Now, I came from the I came from the art world. I studied in New York for eight years. I had my work at Lincoln Center, I at the Cork Gallery. I had my work in 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 uh, art museums throughout the country. You know, working with airbrush. I mean, not airbrush, pastel. I was in the pastel shows every year the pastel society of america and all that you know elected into the american artists professional league the uh allied artists of america so 
for me to go ahead and go into the airbrush world was almost like taboo. And a lot of the airbrush guys were like, what are you doing here? Because they were kind of dubious as to my intentions. But I never left. And so this week, guys, I have an opening this week in New Jersey. And it's an airbrush painting. And it's in a fine art competition. So that's exciting. An airbrush. See, an airbrush in India ink could be either a drawing or a painting, depending how you look at it. And that's exactly how it is, you know. Mr. Mike Rushing, how's it going? Great to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for the super chat. How have you been? Uh, Mr. Mike has been working with the Airbrush India inks, and he just does some incredible paintings. Um, so, you know, really love what he's doing. He's keeping that tradition alive with the Airbrush India inks, and just really enjoy his work, and enjoy your friendship, sir, and your support. It means the world to me. And like I said, you're a part of this community, and it wouldn't be the same without you, Mike. And uh, really enjoy your work. Now, Mike's work is on on Instagram, and just some great stuff. If you have a moment, Mike, if you put your your uh, your address or your name of on Instagram, I would love people to see your work. It's really great and. He uses my airbrush India inks a lot, and that that is such an honor. So as you can see, my friends, we are working on this, and I'm setting up for the lighter colors. Now, you know, I always do the 70-30 rule, right? And because I don't do it, I mean, I don't do it as just like that's my kind of wiggle room, 70% airbrush, 30% everything else. Everything else is usually just paintbrush. I might do a little bit of uh, colored pencil at the very end, but that would be it. And also, scratching is considered the 30%, right? So if you're scratching, that's not airbrush, but that's part of the 30%, which is cool. So that's great. So now, and notice, you know, so I'm airbrushing with the uh, Wicked Paints. But I'm painting with the uh, Createx colors, uh, the illustration, I should say, because it just works better with the brush. So that's basically, and it's, it's less hard on the brush. The Wicked paints are pretty rough on paintbrushes, so that's why. I want my paintbrushes to last. So, but there's no difference, no adherence issues or anything, so that's cool. So as you can see, now I'm setting up for the lighter colors. Mr. Air Todd, all the way from San Diego, how's life treating you? And Mr. Mike, I know I thought you were in Iowa and Illinois. So could you tell me where you are exactly? No, you're in Jersey, right? I think you're in Jersey. Like, refresh my memory, Mike, because sometimes my... Everything becomes like applesauce to me <laughs> in my head. Patty says, I need to try and get some sleep. Storm moving in. Have a great rest. Thank you so much, Patty. Thanks for mentioning the um, the, P the, uh, the the color wheel uh, video, and I appreciate that so much. And, and uh, those who haven't, check out the free PDF in the description. Uh, Patty says, remember to hit the like button. Thank you for that, Patty. So now we are set up for the lighter areas. So we're not just going to put the lighter areas. We're going to think about what those lighter areas are. So that's a brown. So let's go to, let's go here. And if we want a brown, and we're just going to lighten it up. So remember the color wheel. You know, you have your primaries. You know, your red, your blue, and your yellow. Those are colors that you can't mix. And we're talking about paint, not CMYK or anything like that, right? So those are our primaries that we're working with. So what we want to do, and so with the primaries, we have our, our primaries and our secondaries, right? So we have our, our red, we have our orange, we have our green, right? And we have our violet. 
And then in between them, in between our secondaries and our primaries, are right in between. So we have our red, violet, our red, orange, our yellow, orange, our yellow, green, our blue, green, and our blue, violet. So that's all the colors that we need, right? So we're really concentrating on all the colors that we need. So with that in mind, we want to use these windows. So these windows are great because you can see if you want to add yellow and you can go over every color, whether it's a secondary or a primary or in between, and you can see what yellow does. But I heard that if you mix orange and black, you're going to get a brown. But just on accident, I seen if I mix a yellow and green, I get a type of brown. But that's more of a kind of canceling out and becoming more of a grayish color. But let's do what I heard. So I'm going to take orange, which is right here. And then I have a window for black. And I'm going to move this over. And we're going to see what this does. Bam. So that's our brown. And we want it a little bit lighter. So in my mind, I'm not going to add white. I'm going to think, what if it goes a little bit towards yellow? And if I come here, wow, does that look like the color? So right here. But then I have this white here. And let's see if I add this window here. So you see how you can basically get the colors that you're looking for with this window. So that's what I'm going to do. So with that thinking, I'm going to take my orange. Now this is a red orange, right? So we want our pure orange. And I'm going to go and draw from my set of illustration colors. This bottle of illustration colors is so amazing. I had this in 2012, and it's still great not missing anything I mean it still flows still has the color there's no scent smell or anything it's just absolutely amazing so we're just gonna put a little bit there a little lot there huh that was a little too much okay got my rag of death here okay and now we have our orange our pure orange and we're gonna add black and black seems to be the color of the day here so we're just gonna now, with this wet palette, you can see I had the black here for a while. About three days I've been using that black. And are we getting the color? Yeah, so I would rather get the color mixing with my primary than, let's say, grabbing, a, you know, a particular color. So right now we have this kind of brown color, right? So we established that. And and I don't want to use white so much, so I'm going to see if I could bring in the yellow here. And then maybe we'll come in with some white. Notice after three days, I can still activate these paints. And that's wild. Let's see. So I'm looking at, so I may be a little bit, you know, over, overzealous with this. So I may have to kill the color a little bit, add a little more black there. And now we'll water it down a little bit. And let's see any, co any comments that I'm missing. Oh, everyone's wishing Patty a great night. So right now we're at 58% to 42%. So that's interesting. So it's getting interesting, this poll. I respect everyone's opinion with the highest regard. Let's see what this does. So we're going to start. We're not just going to put an arbitrary. We're going to just kind of lightly. Remember, light pressure means a very light application of color. So like I was saying, my work's in a gallery. 
this month here in Jersey and it's an airbrush painting so I'm gonna be illustrate you know putting my work in more of the fine art sphere Mr. Mr. Steve Leahy, how's it going, sir? Great to see you. How's everything? I'm so glad you're here. That is so great. And Ryan says he was up early, so he has to check out. Looks awesome, Tim, as usual. Mr. Ryan, thanks so much for the super chat. Thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you, sir. And stay warm up there in Canada, although Mr. Brad says it is kind of warming up in Canada lately, so that's good news. I'm so glad you made it, Mr. Steve. So glad you're here. So you can see I may be going in a little bit too light. So it might be too light in as far as color, not pressure. And maybe I could add a little bit more of the orange here. And you want to build off your first application of the light color. So you kind of do a connection. And then, you know, you're going to be needing more. You're going to be playing with the different values. But that's the fun part of hair because it's something that, you know, you're working at through the whole painting, kind of putting it together. And so, so cool. So, Steve, you did something that all of us artists do. I was watching, I think it was your one of your videos. I only could see a little part of it. But when you hit down the spray and, and the paint came out right away, and I have to say, you know, how Mr. Mr. Leahy handled that, man. He was just like... You know, he was just like, that happened. We're just going to work right through it. And that was just amazing. And that's like the whole live stream mentality. Like anything could happen. And anything probably will happen eventually. Right, Steve? So kudos on how you handled that. He just wiped off the red and just went in as nothing happened. That was incredible. One time when I was doing a live stream years ago, my light fell on me. And the show had to go on, you know. <laughs> yes, that happened. So, as Steve knows, and you guys know, when you're painting a long time, you know, when you're further along the painting, you have this layer of acrylic on there. So when you do have a blowout, you just wipe it off. In the early days, in the early part of the painting, when you have a porous surface, that's when it's like really a disaster. I was doing this painting and I was putting the finishing touches on it and I was so happy with it. And just like Steve, when I cleaned it, I didn't put it all the way forward and I went Psh! and it went bam right on my painting. And it was like this bright yellow. And the first thing I did was like, just had my mouth open. It was five o'clock in the morning just before I had to go to my corporate job years ago. And I just like, oh my God. And and I just said, I'm just going to try and wipe it off. And since it was, the painting was almost at the end, it just wiped off. And it was just like unbelievable. Yeah, dark sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, that was unbelievable stuff when that happened. So, Steve, what was some of the craziest things that happened during a live stream with you so far? Or anyone out there who does live streams, you know, what was the craziest thing that you've seen on a live stream, whether it's art or not, and, you know, that you actually witnessed? I'd love to hear. That's a pretty fun topic. So, yeah, so uh, there was this one artist. He only tried it once. And he had all these different, he had like, he had like, he had like a, a sound guy, he had a video guy, 
he had all of this and it was all this build up to this premiere live stream and and he had all these different camera angles and when he started the live stream there was like four different echoes like every camera's every camera's uh, audio was going and there was a picture in picture and it was like an infinity thing going on it was really like being in a fun house and I never seen him do a live stream ever again so that was crazy uh, but yeah so I that was the craziest thing I've seen that I witnessed and Steve says channel members get to see that one everyone else gets to see oh next week oh cool so I am a channel member of Mr. Leahy so Mr. Leahy has which is really cool he has a membership and it's really inexpensive I think it's only like $2.99 a month and you get all these extra things and so that's really cool so you get extra videos and there's a lot of great perks to that and I think you get 10% off of any of his artwork which is great so that is amazing so definitely $2.99 a month you can't go wrong and let's see uh, Michael says if I did a live stream we have to have that bleep button <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you know sometimes I have you know I use expletives I'm getting better and I'm working on it but you know one thing that we that's why you think like me and Steve and Scott you know and you know we don't use expletives because we don't want to get demonetized because once that happens uh, the video you lose monetization so you know from ad revenue and stuff so every time I think I'm about to say a bad word it puts the brakes on you know and uh, so during COVID you know it was you know it was uh, there were a lot more people on on the live streams and that was when the light fell on me and I tried to act like nothing happened but everyone's like did a light just fall on you and I'm like yes <laughs> and uh, so that's really funny so yeah we were talking about the early days of the internet now back in the internet I never early days of the internet I never would have foreseen this like even going to art school in the 80s I never would have foreseen anything like this we didn't even have the bandwidth to even dream about it it was only for those who knew people who knew people to you know go into you know either public access PBS or something like that and Steve says the feeds that let run without people knowing are my favorite oh my god yeah that happened to me one time one time I you know there's a little button on the on the uh, split cam that I use the software and I didn't hit the button and I was walking around and uh, it was it was unbelievable um, and I was like thank God I didn't like take off my shirt because people were watching me walk around and I think I was talking to my cat and so that could have been super embarrassing then someone sent me an IM and said you're still online so I got that off so that was the one crazy that could have been bad Gary says do I know this woman in the painting I don't but uh, she is inspired by somebody so she's like I consider her like playing the actress of someone who is this painting is inspired by and so I'm doing this whole series on her and uh, it's really great and the next one's gonna be really interesting because it's gonna be a the same kind of theme but a little bit different model and that's gonna be great so well hopefully it's gonna be great and that's what I'm looking forward to great question uh, Gary I appreciate that 
Okay, so we just so the thing is with the wet palette, sometimes the paint will spread, right? So you you have to spread with the painting, you know. And we'll just bring this out here. Maybe bring a little bit of the yellow in here and the dark color. And it's a little bit lighter, so I'm going to lighten it up. If I was airbrushing, I might get a little more technical with reaching the color, but this is not, this is hair, so you can be a lot more, uh, a lot more artistic license with hair. You really got to get the, the value correct. That's, I think, a little bit more important than getting the exact color. And like I said, you can get a little more artistic with this. Yeah, so that was one moment that was uh, interesting. There were some people that I seen that had their whole channel because they said something when they thought they weren't live. And that's tragic, you know? I mean, you think you're you know, in a private setting and then all of a sudden everyone in the world just heard what you said and and then their whole channel, you know, like sometimes with like a million subscribers and they were just canceled. And that was kind of tragic, you know. And the temperature went up a little today. Yeah, it is really getting hot, you know. I think it's going to be in the 70s tomorrow, which is... Kind of absurd. I'm gonna get a little more spread here. And just bring this down. And if ever it's too much, you can just rub it with your hand there. And then we have some light hairs coming down. But as you can see, the you know, hair is interesting because it's sort of a journey that it's just back and forth and It'll tell you when it's done. And that's usually the last thing, right? Usually the hair is the last thing to get fully resolved. And it's always one of the first things that you work on. So it's sort of the, the, the engine and the caboose at the same time. And it is a frame uh, of a woman's portrait right it's like it's like a beautiful frame around her face so I always loved painting women and I remember when I was a kid and I lived in New York City and I had a job at a butcher shop and I was around 14 years old and I would take the money and there was no real art stores back then. That didn't exist. There were these little frame shops that used to sell art supplies, right? And, and every day I would go there and, you know, get some oil paints or some calligraphy pens and, and these Walter Forster books. Do you guys, anyone out there remember the Walter Forster books? They were really great. Uh, let me hear anybody who heard of the Walter Forster books. So now I did that, and I'm just going to come back in with the darks again, right? To kind of work back and forth, just to show you guys and girls how I, how I kind of work the hair. Now, you don't want to be, you don't want to work the hair like, you know, be really like meticulous about it. Hair is free, free flowing. And not only that, it, it's kind of the one place in the painting where you can be loose. And you don't want to be really meticulous in the hair because if you ask me, it takes away a lot of the lifeblood of the painting if you're too loose. And I'm coming from the fine art world, right? So that's my opinion. It's not, it's not the truth or anything. That's just my opinion. And I like going back and forth and really uh, getting the movement and kind of being free free to kind of get the feel that I want that kind of supports 
what I'm saying about my model. And Dwayne says he's back with dealing with one of those chatty clients. Oh, that's okay. You, that's cool. So, so I hopefully he's a client that's gonna spend some money. Steve says it was 70 in Ohio. Wow, the vitamin D was glorious. That's cool. Steve says, oh yes, Forster and John Nagy. Yes, so cool. Gary says, funny story. I called Scott McKay one night after his Facebook feed. He never ended it. And he could hear him breathing while he was cleaning his airbrush. Just give him a heads up. Oh, man. You don't know how much you saved him. That is so great, Gary. You know? You know, it's just, you know, and that's the weird thing. When we leave that on, it's like, oh, my God. It, you know, his whole private life could have been exposed, and you know? And, you know, not to say that it would be anything bad, but something he doesn't want the whole world to know. So you really did him a solid. So that's great. Now, the one guy who did me a solid was uh, Willie, uh, I think, 1956. He's really cool. And he's the one who said, hey, Tim, you're still alive. And I even think Brad did that one time for me. Uh, Brad Mummery. If you recall, if you're still here, sir, you did that one for me and said, hey, dude, you're still, you're still live. So that's cool. And I think it was one time I wasn't feeling too good, you know, so, uh, but there's a lot of funny things that we can't talk about if you want to have monetization and it couldn't even like be something very innocent. But if YouTube hears you say that, you can possibly get demonetized and that's not good you know the live streamers work very hard to get to the point where you are able to get monetization and as you can see we're working on her neck here and now we're starting to you know get a little bit better with you know the hair and the flow but we have a ways to go so i'm going to go back and forth but basically i wanted to show you how i did that but now we have this dark brown color and we could use that to our advantage and come down here now when i'm doing airbrush chances are i won't be using this same color looking for other areas i'll usually mix that color but here with the paintbrush and getting into the end I'm going to use this uh, color here to get the contrast I want here and there. Because when I use the airbrush for the lighter areas, I get some overspray in the end. I'm not being so careful. I kind of like the softness. But now I can bring back the astral. How's it going all the way from the UK? How are you, sir? I'm so glad you're here. How's everything over there in the UK? How's life in Europe? And so I'm so glad Mr. Astral is hanging out. So the Walter Foster books were really great because as a kid, they cost $2 and it would have like a really cool theme. Like one was just on anatomy and it had like a skull on it and it had a difference between men and women, you know, not the obvious reason, but you know, like skeletal structure and muscles and skull, uh, skull structure. And I just ate that stuff up alive. I was just really loving it. Then they had one on charcoal nudes. And man, that was even before I went to art school. And those Walter Foster books really were so important for me to really get that love for classical Western art. You know, it was really fantastic. How's your son out there in Japan, Mr. Astro? So, so glad to see you. Yeah, so when I was going to art school, there was, so what was really big was illustration. You know, book cover illustration, illustrating magazines. It was so big, they used to have every year the illustrator's guide, market guide. So, you know, there was all these jobs that you can just go ahead and look up in different areas and become an illustrator and make the work. But when I graduated, 
uh, art school, illustration was pretty much dying out because the advent of digital came and it was much cheaper to have a digital artist than have a fine artist do it. So that was kind of rough. Astral says he's okay in the UK. His son is getting ready for work at the moment. Wow, that's cool. How the hours are different, right? It's in the morning right now over in Japan, I imagine. So that's just great. Okay, so that's basically, I'm going to leave that for the hair right now. And let's see, I maybe we could switch gears and maybe work on... Uh, this tree kind of get that tree coming forward right because right now it's kind of blending in part of it's blending in because of the uh glare but we can definitely work on that a little bit more so what i'm going to do so i'm going to put my wet palette aside we're going to come back to that if we have time and let's see astral says just spent two hours talking to him oh wow it's 11 45 a.m that's amazing and Dwayne says as a kid i learned to draw by buying secondhand paperbacks and trying to recreate the covers that's amazing so cool Dwayne. it's just like those those moments in time mr Dwayne, uh, mr dave said tim looking great i'm calling you tonight as always thanks for sharing the knowledge and talent Good night all, drive fast, take risks. If you are going to do something stupid, be smart about it. <laughs> That's good advice, my friend. Thank you so much, Dave, for your friendship and support and hanging out with us. And thank you for being such an important part of this community, sir. I appreciate you so much and give my regards to your family, sir. And make sure you, you don't work too hard, all right? So that's cool. So thank you, sir. And uh, again, thank you for the very generous super chat. It's so appreciated. And Mr. Astral says, nine hours ahead of the UK. Wow. So we are five hours behind and then an extra nine. Wow, that's really something. Michael says, Astral, your son was liking Scott McKay. Very cool. And Dwayne says, so I'm a huge fan of fantasy art, mostly those book covers and the incredible art by them. Yeah, that was some good stuff. The illustrators were very instrumental to me, but I think in my early days, like I would say like from 14 to 17, the comic book artists were really important to me. Yeah, the comic book artists were super, super instrumental for me. Uh, oh, so uh, Astral Sun was impressed with uh, Mr. McKay. Yeah, he's fantastic. He really is. So now our goal is, okay, so we have to separate that tree. And I do have some freehand stencils that uh, came from my drawing. So... And we're going to put my, my palette aside. And I'm going to see if I do have the stencil where I have that tree isolated. So we're going to check that out real quick. Let's see. And I'm going to come over here. I think I have it. It might be two different pieces that I need to use to isolate that tree. Yes, yeah, so it probably is a background that I need. So I have this one, which I haven't used. And let's put this on because this will give us the right side of it. You'll see. We just put this right here. There we go. That will give us the edge. And now we really want to make this stand out. And how we may do it, looking at the reference here, is 
I may have to just darken this edge just a little bit, darken this up, create more contrast, and, and you know, resolve this snow here. So we have to have a game plan, and this is, you know, the end of it. When you're kind of making decisions to make it a better piece of artwork, not so much, you know, copying the reference, but now it's sort of making it a good piece of artwork at this point, right? Because when you're in a gallery show, you are going against other artworks. And it's not always consideration of how realistic it is. It's more a real or consideration on how effective it is as a painting. I know that sounds weird, but it's true, you know. So now I'm going to come over here and see if I can isolate that. If it's in, so let's see. So, you know, I may not have it, and that's okay. You know, in late in the painting, you know, you lose your, you know, your little reference things, your stencils and everything, and then it gets like. You kind of have to do it the old-fashioned way at the end, you know? And I think that's where we are now. So I'm going to just use some freehand shields. So what I want to do is I want to darken this over here. So I'm going to pretty much find the gray and maybe go a little bit darker than I have with the gray. And I'm going to use that same color over here to kind of darken these edges here and create more contrast and let's see oh astral says i'm doing a lovely job thank you sir i appreciate that um very much oh so frazetta viejo yeah those guys boris viejo frank frazetta Waylon eggletown you know about hr geiger my dad was a big science fiction fan he loved star trek and you know doctor who he was like a prisoner of, of, uh, of PBS, and I say that in the best way because he was watching intelligent, intelligent television, and uh, he would get the magazines, and I would see the work of Geiger, and it was just so outlandish and wild. I used to always be fascinated by it, but yeah, Frank Frazetta and Viejo were really amazing, amazing artists, you know? Uh, just incredible. So what I'm going to do, yeah, it's so amazing, right, everybody, how, you know, different artists could really affect us, right? Uh, you know, who are the artists that really got us, got our artistic blood boiling? So who was it for you, Mr. Leahy? And that, oh, that's another question. I'm going to, so the poll is very close. So if anyone hasn't uh, answered the poll. I'm going to put another quick poll up, but if anyone hasn't answered this poll, go ahead and answer. I'm going to shut it down in the next couple of minutes. So right now the question is, do you use a PC or laptop in your to, in your work area for reference? So, you know, so, and that could be a phone, a tablet, stuff like that. Right now it's 53% yes, 47% no. Surprisingly, right down the middle. I'm surprised at that. You know, there's no right answer, you know. And Dwayne's favorite magazine was Heavy Metal. Wow. Yeah, my dad watched, used to get Omni Magazine all the time. And I had a job at the butcher shop across the street. So, you know, I lived in New York City, like in New York City. And um, so when I used to go to magazine and get comic books, I'd pick them up like an Omni Magazine. He always loved it, you know. Uh, okay, so now we're going, I'm going to find that gray. Find that gray, Tim. All right. And I'm going to go a little bit darker. Oh, Astro loved Omni Mag. Weren't they so fascinating? My dad was, was a real fascinating guy. You know, he loved politics. He was an accountant at one time and then stopped doing that. And, you know. Uh, but he was a great mind. 
So I'm going a little darker. See, the thing is with, with airbrush, see how it looks really dark here? But we're going to dilute it and spray it, and it's going to be much lighter than that. So here at this stage, I'm being a little more laxed in my color mixing because I'm making decisions not based on my reference, but making a better painting. Making a better painting, like more contrast, directing the eye, that sort of stuff. I did something interesting. I mixed my Wicked paint with water. Let's see how that goes. Let's go to the loony bin together. We're gonna, we're gonna break all convention. Okay, so we put this here, and there we go. All right, so let's see how this sprays first. I like it. I think that's the color we're looking. So now, since we don't have our freehand stencils, we have to be extra careful. So what I'm doing is I'm creating more of contrast because I want that tree to come forward. So I'm going to create the contrast on the edges, right? And so that way that tree will come forward. And then I'm going to lighten the background just a little bit here and there. So, you know, whatever is the highest contrast, that's where it's going to pop and you see how it's popping just right now at that edge so it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do and this stuff happens when you do lots of paintings right you do paintings after paintings and then you learn how to manipulate the viewers eye and also like going to museums and everything ah uh, Michael says he's calling the night uh, uh, Michael, thank you so much for the super chat. Great painting with the clown and the sunflowers. Just fantastic. And uh, great minds think alike, right, Michael? And uh, we'll talk during the week. And always a pleasure. And thank you for, for the super chat and being such a wonderful friend. Thank you, sir. So great to see you, Michael. And so that is great. And yeah, so... So, okay, so the end of the poll is going to be 53% yes, working with a PC or laptop for reference. So that's pretty cool. Yes, edged everything. So that's good. And, oh man, Mr. Todd, have a great night. Thank you so much for hanging out all the way from San Diego. Stay cool and... Uh, Thanks for being such a great friend and hanging out with me on a Wednesday. I appreciate you. So we're ending this poll, and we're going to start a new poll. And you can see uh, 15 votes, so very cool. Thank you guys for voting there. And we're going to start a new poll. So this one is, uh, well, yeah, so... Uh, Let's see. Oh, here's a good one. This is going to be a fun one. Oh, wait, so this is a yes and no, so here we go. Okay, here we go. You guys are going to like this. I'm starting to poll. And this one is... Do you still paint with your first ever airbrush? I would like to hear what you have to say. Uh, oh, Mr. Todd says, I need to find a place to paint to paint your class, Tim. Oh, I can't wait. And when you do, you let me know. And uh, when you start the class, I'm going to 
definitely help you. Uh, now, do you mean the online course or my mentorship? Either way, I'm going to take care of you, Todd, so no worries. And you take your time. Uh, that's most important. So here's so. Do you use your uh, your first? Uh, do you still use your first ever airbrush? So I am going to say no. My first ever airbrush. So I'm going to say no. Or can I can I vote? I don't think I can. Oh, I think I did. So right now we're at 50-50. So 50% 50 use their first airbrush. And... Oh, your stand-up easel. I see, definitely. Oh, Mr. Gary, thanks for hanging out. Hershey, Pennsylvania. And thank you so much for the very generous super chat and spending your Wednesday with me. I am honored and thankful for your friendship. And I hope you have a great week. And, uh, and I hope your airbrush is running smooth all week with no tip dry and definitely no clogs. So take care. And, oh, my course. Oh, yes, definitely. When you take the course, Todd, you let me know, and I'll help you through it, okay? So that's important. So right now we're at 50% uh, yes, 50% no. So I have to say no, I don't. Use my first airbrush. Um, it was the Badger 150, and it just wasn't a fit for my kind of artwork. And uh, so I, once I actually, my first uh, really good airbrush was the HP CH, the Highline, because I saw David uh, Daniel Powers great artist, just fantastic. He did, uh, oh my God, it was this woman, a painting of a woman on, on a hood of, I think it was either the hood or a motorcycle, front of a motorcycle. And it was just fantastic. And it was just one of those videos where he wasn't talking and they had this really cool music. And I was just mesmerized by it. And I was like, holy cow. And I got that first airbrush. And that's when I first had my first real, you know, detail airbrush that was pretty much made for what I did. Look at that. Astral's first one was the Badger 100 sad side feed. I used that airbrush. That was a great airbrush. You still have that, sir. Dwayne said, that could be a trick question. I still use my first real airbrush. Oh, and <laughs> now what's the first airbrush that, you know, that you were happy with that was pretty much doing what you wanted it to do? Because back in the day, there were no live streams or anything. You pretty much kind of winged it. And notice I'm using this paper as a shield to get this hard edge. And you see how that tree is coming forward just that quickly. Oh, replace it with the Sotar. That's amazing. That's an amazing airbrush. My favorite of the Sotar is the Sotar Slim. That's the one airbrush I feel that is like a, like a pen. It's like working with a pen. It's really great. Dwayne says his first was also a Badger one, but only used it for models as a little kid. My first real air... Oh, the HPC. Love the HPC. Beautiful airbrush. That's basically the High Line without the Mac valve, right? If I'm not mistaken. I'm just going to put an edge here. Right like that. And then I'm going to darken this here. So I'm going to cover this. I'm going to be a little more strategic. Because what I have to do is I have to darken the background to make that tree stand out. I'll put my airbrush down for that.
So today is interesting. I've been using a combination of the Wicked and the illustrations. You got your HPC at 14? Wow, you were like way above the curve there, Mr. Dwayne, as far as, you know, having good quality uh, paintbrush, uh, airbrushes and everything. What paint did you use? I would love to hear. We're still at 50-50 with do you still own your first ever airbrush? And Astral says, he has the Sotar Slim, Renegade Chrome, and the Renegade. You're a badger man like myself. Very cool. And the Sotar Slim is such a beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment. I really love it. I do like the Renegade a lot. Uh, the Chrome, I don't have too much information about it. Dwayne says, uh, 83 was a couple of years ago. <laughs> yes. Just a few. <laughs> and Dwayne also says he mowed a crap load of lawns. Wow, you were really inspired as a young kid. That's cool. Man, if we hung out, you would have had me airbrushing. There was one kid that he... I was living in the story of Queens, New York City. And he did his painting of Bruce Lee. And it was with an airbrush. And it wasn't really that hot. But that smoothness, right? That those edges really kind of, really kind of blew my mind. But we didn't hang out much after that. I think he moved away. But that really fascinated me. And through my life, when I met airbrush artists, you airbrush artists always like fascinated the heck out of me, but then I never seen you again. And, you know, I was immersed in the fine art world, so it was always elusive in the early going. And Astral says he was 20 and 83. Okay, very cool. Very cool. And Dwayne says all he ever wanted to do was airbrush art since he was little. That is really wild. So that's like really in your blood, man. That's great. So let's take a look and see if... And that tree is coming forward. So what we can do now is we darken this. Um, let's see if we can kind of lighten up this area here. And I think we can do it with paintbrush technique. Because right now, when you use white in this area, it could get a little dicey. So, let's see. I'm going to bring back my... So, that's the cool thing about the 75-25 rule. You know, anything goes, you know. If I was working on a car, you know, or something, it'd be a little bit different. But, you know, we're not. So, we have some artistic license here. Dwayne says, that is why it is my only medium, not out of prejudice, but out of love. Very cool. And I respect that, sir. And that's why you have this well of information, which is just incredible. And incredible that you share it with us. I mean, we're honored. Uh, a, true, a true airbrush artist, I have to say. And that's, that's an honor. So I have this white here, and I'm going to kind of cloud up this twig a little bit here. And here I am using the 50-50 uh, illustration white here. There we go. See how I'm trying to smooth out the snow behind. And then I may come in and kind of go over and do some really light fuzzy twigs here. And that's the thing, you know, it's at this point, it's all about making better painting, you know? Astral says, I wish my body would still do the things I could do when in 83. Oh my God, yeah. 
that's me too. And Dwayne says, why I have a drawer full of airbrushes now. <laughs> when I was, you know, in the 80s, and I still consider myself in shape, but not as in shape. I used to be able to do like 20, 20 pull-ups. Just unbelievable. Just 20 pull-ups, man, like it was nothing. And not chin-ups, but pull-ups, you know, where you, you know, have your hands this way, not this way. And that was just amazing, you know. And, you know, I was an athlete in high school and college, so, you know, sports came easy for me, you know. And that's one of the hardest things, I think, going on now uh, is the physicality that I don't have, you know. So I miss that. I miss the sports, you know, the sport of it all and just the physicality and, you know, playing football and being able to hit somebody, you know, that was, I missed that. And uh, let's see, Dwayne says, uh, he wishes he's, uh, he wishes he started years ago when he wanted to. That's what Bobby said. You know what? But the thing is, think of all the information you're bringing in now, right? So you started now, thank God, and you're doing it, and you're creating great work, and and you bring all your knowledge and all the information and your perspective. So I think it's great. I think what you bring to the art world now, Bobby, is something that can't be replicated. So I think that's exciting. And uh, Mr. Dwayne says, uh, Tim used a decant used spray cans to airbrush with. <laughs> In New York City, I remember the, the kids who used to be those, uh, you know, those graffiti artists. And they even invited me one time to go to, you know, where they parked the trains at night, the subway trains. And I was like, no way. Because those kids would get arrested back then. And, you know, that was some pretty scary stuff. Yes, Dwayne says you're doing it now and that's what matters. So true, Dwayne. Astral says he was a black belt in Kung Fu. Really? That is fantastic. You know, I saw the movie uh, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, back in, uh, I think it was like in 94, 95. And, no, I think it was in 92. No, maybe 90. It, it doesn't matter, but that encouraged me to study Kempo Karate for about three years. And I'll tell you, martial arts is, in my teaching... When I teach my students, a lot of it has to do with how my sensei taught me as well. You know, my airbrush, my art teachers were very important. But also, the way that I teach has a lot to do with my sensei and how he taught me. So it's interesting how that is. And Raf, uh, Bobby says he doesn't have the skills and talent like you all do. That's why I'm taking... And that's why you're going to get those skills, because I'm going to make sure of it. And uh, I'm going to make sure I... Now, I'm not giving you talent. I see you already have the talent, Bobby. My job is just to amplify that talent and bring it to the forefront. And it doesn't matter when you started. It matters how you finish. And uh, you have a lot of talent, sir. And that is the truth. So you're on the right road. And that's so important. <coughs> and Dwayne says, I did it because I couldn't afford real airbrush paint. So I think I missed it. Uh, what was uh, what was the paint that you used, uh, Mr. Mr. Dwayne, in your first airbrushing years? And let's see. Oh, Bobby says, single dad raising two kids on his own, working two jobs, never had time. That is so much more important. But think about, you know, that knowledge you have and an experience, and you can bring that to the airbrush world. I think that's, that's great, you know. 
and nothing can replace, you know, you being there for your kids. And I think that's great. I think that's more important than anything else we can do in this life. Coming from somebody who wasn't blessed, I had, you know, stepchildren who I, I love very much, but I wasn't blessed with my own kids, but, you know, I was, you know, honored to r help raise two kids, and I'm so proud of them, but I, I wasn't blessed with, you know, kids of my own. And I think that's amazing. Oh, you decan spray cans? Oh my God, was it like fluorocarbons in that? That must have been incredibly dangerous. Couldn't they have exploded? That's incredible. And wow, decan spray cans. That's, that's like a story in itself. So you see guys how... Um, um, kind of creating contrast here so that tree comes forward and also cleaning it up. So I'm going to show you the cleanup over here. So you see how it's kind of messy. I'm just showing you the close up and how we're kind of bringing this together. As Harvey used to say, bring it on home. Harvey Dinnerstein, my teacher. And, oh, and Bobby says uh, he wouldn't change it for sure. He sacrificed a lot of pleasures for their needs. That's a real dad, man. That's great. And that's, that's an eternal, that's an eternal uh, achievement. That's something that will last forever. So I admire that, sir. And just see how this is clearing up, right? It's so cool. I may come back with the airbrush and kind of soften up where these... Uh, but maybe not. Maybe I like having the hard edge there. Because I'm directing this whole area, right? With her, her, her lips, her expression, the pomegranate. You're the director, right? You're the director and the producer. You get to, at this stage, you get to go ahead and and move the eye. So uh, move the eye of the viewer. So right now we're at 60% don't have their first ever airbrush. So I think the first ever airbrush gets a licking and doesn't keep ticking, you know. I know Mr. Leahy said he had his first airbrush. His dad got him an Iwata, which is really cool. I think it was a custom Micron. It's a lot of fun, you know, like this is going to be the last that I'm going to be doing this on the live stream, this particular painting, but I'm going to be, you know, during the week, I'll be looking at this and being like, okay, I need to fix this, I need to fix that, and, you know, like any painting, you don't know it's going to be done until it's done, it's going to tell you when it's done, and Dwayne says there was a vending machine business in town, and he could get the old ones with a little paint left in them. Wow, how cool is that? And so you learned with Pepsi, Blue, Coca-Cola, Red. Wow, that is so wild. So you were, you know, you really made it happen, right, Twain? I admire you. My parents were so cool. They were blue collar, you know. And here I come along, one out of five kids, and says, I want to be an artist. And they looked at me like I had two heads. But when I said I wanted to be an artist, I was three years old. It was just, I never wanted to be a fireman or a football player. I was just, just I was an artist. So, you know, 
that's kind of what happened. So let's zoom out and see if that that tree is coming forward, and I think it is. So one of the things we can do to make it come forward is uh, maybe lighten up this side, right? Um, we're going to lighten it up even more on the edge. So we're going to add a little bit more of this color. So yeah, you were driven, as some would say. You're still driven, right? It's something that you still have in you. It doesn't go away. And why would we pick this crazy life if we weren't driven, right? There's easier ways to make money. <laughs> Astral says he loved to paint with those colors. Oh, yeah, with the 7-Up Green and the Coca-Cola Red, right? Yeah, it's... Whenever I hear of young ones... They, you know, they, they say, I want to be an artist and everything like that. And I'm like, just make sure you really love it. You know, you can be an artist, but, you know, if this is what you want to do for your life's work, then you really have to, you have to know you're going to sacrifice for it. It's not cheap. You know, I'm not talking monetize why, as everybody knows. It's not cheap because you're going to have to make sacrifices. And it's a shame. Not every artist, but most artists, have to make sacrifices. And uh, I just thank God I had beautiful parents who, who knew what made me happy and supported me and let me go to art school. Even though it went against everything that they... They said, you know, I'll be right back, guys. I'm just going to get a little drink. So hold, and we're only going to be for another. So uh, have conversations amongst each other, and I'll be right there. Hold on for me. Okay, that was fast. Thank you so much. Uh, we only have like nine minutes, and the poll is still at 6040. So the spray cans, Mr. Dwayne says, work great at a time. I could do t shirts. Wow. That's what I'm really, that's like, you know, life finds a way, right? You know, it always reminded me when I lived in the city where you would have like just concrete, you know, concrete sidewalks. And then you would see little, little weeds coming out, you know, between the cracks of the sidewalk, you know. It's like in any condition, you know, if something wants it enough, hard enough or someone wants it hard enough, if they're going to have it regardless of what's going against them. And Dwayne is a, a perfect example. And Bobby says he can't wait till tomorrow's class. He hasn't touched an airbrush since our last class with everything. I understand, man. We're going to have a good time tomorrow, Bobby. And uh, talk about some color mixing and stuff. It's going to be great. So looking forward to that. And we'll talk about, you know, where we're going in future classes and everything. So it's going to be great. So looking forward to that, Bobby. Uh, very much so. And once again... Uh, uh, Bobby, you know, my condolence is my friend and, uh, life is, uh, not always the easiest thing in the world, you know, but art is always fun, isn't it? And there's no difference between airbrush art and oil painting. And maybe that's my contribution is to in my small way, you know, tell the world how, you know, great artists like, like Dwayne, you know, who has that bug and, you know, and his story, you know, it wasn't because it was just something to make money. This was, this is part of his soul, you know, and that's exactly what goes on and went on with Rembrandt and, you know, Vermeer and all the great Michelangelo is the same thing. So there's no difference. And that's 
and that's true, you know. It's just as much fine art as anything else. And, ah, thank you so much, Mr. Bobby. I appreciate you very much. And uh, so this has been a good live stream, a great live stream. Just thank you so much, everyone, for the wonderful, amazing, just heartwarming support. You know, sometimes being a full-time artist, I stay up at night, you know, you know, just thinking about, oh, my God, you know, what's going to happen to me doing this? Am I going to be able to continue it? And then nights like this happen. And I know it's like an answer to prayer that this is the right place for me, you know, doing this stuff. And, you know, everyone out there, you guys have the airbrush because it's right for you. This is what you should do. And that's so important. And, uh, you know, Astral tells me about his, you know, his airbrushes and, you know, Bobby and how he's, you know, itching to create and the great story about Dwayne. It's just, we all have that same bug, you know, it's not going away. And Dwayne says he was driven to make money only when my parents said it was a waste of time and wouldn't go anywhere. You know, we all had those relatives, right? And... You know, they, they just wanted you to be okay, you know? And our parents' generation, they came from the Depression era, right? So World War II, so they know what it's like to have hungry days. And for us to say, I want to become an artist, they must have said, are you kidding, you know? They were just like, we got to make sure this kid doesn't make the mistakes with all these opportunities that he's squandering. But... You know, my mom and my dad, you know, they were like, you're crazy at times. I was crazy, you know, to go to art school and everything. But I changed their mind with my convictions that, you know, this is what I want to do. This is, this is who I am. And then they were on board. Yeah, so it wasn't their fault, right? Uh, Dwayne, they were just looking out for us. And that's it, you know, they're just looking out for us. And Bobby says, thanks for the stream. Always look forward to all your videos. Thank you, Bobby. You're doing what you're meant to do. You're an amazing artist and teacher. Thank you, Bobby. That means a lot. I'm so, and that's the thing, you know, doing this, and I so appreciate you know, your wonderful, you know, supportive comments. I mean, means the world to me. But if I wasn't doing this and being where I was, being where I am, and maybe I was doing something else, making a lot of money, I never would have met you guys and, and women out there, you know, airbrush artists and everything. So, yeah, I, I am where I want to be, and you guys are as well. And, you know, and just... You know, we just have to keep the faith and keep going, no matter how dark it looks at times. That just means that, you know, we are where we are. We are where we're supposed to be because sometimes where we're supposed to be is not always going to be rosy. It's going to be rough, rough patches, right? Rough areas. So now, you know, we can see we're getting to where that tree is coming forward, right? And and I'm going to put some more color in that tree later off camera and stuff like that. And then right here, you know, where where it's hitting the light most, I'm going to take this paintbrush here and then I'm going to come in with the airbrush and I'm just going to follow the grain of of the tree and kind of bring that forward a little bit like so and so right now we're at 1129 so I'll keep you posted on Facebook uh, about the completion of this painting but as far as this next week we're gonna have a whole new painting and but this is where we are so far she's getting there uh, let me see if I can bring her. So, yeah, so this is where she is so far. And 
little by little she's coming together still some work to do in her face and lips and everything but as far as the teaching part i think it kind of helps of you know my my method of of working on a portrait uh in the winter time and how the winter affects everything and kind of get that whole look and uh thank you astro i had a great time as well and uh, Dwayne says, thank you for saying it. I wouldn't be who I am without it. That's so true, Dwayne. And you had great parents who, you know, who let you do what you do because they loved you. Raul from New Jersey. Thanks so much for hanging out. It's great to see you. And uh, Bobby says, I hope I can do streams one day. And art no, you're going to be doing streams one day. I'm going to teach you how to do it. So you're going to be part of doing your own stream i'll make sure of it and Dwayne says lots of practice bobby and great stuff tim looks awesome guys thank you so much for hanging out thank you for the super chats and uh like i said i'll show you this when it's done probably another three hours and she should be completed next week a whole new live stream that's going to be fantastic Guys and girls, thanks so much for hanging out and making my Wednesday special. Uh, I just feel great hanging out with you guys. That's all I have to say. You know, you guys are like a tonic to my soul. So, end of the second poll, 60% don't have their first airbrush. 40% do. That's pretty cool. And just a little bit more. Uh, people use a computer or laptop or their iPad when they paint. Take care, guys. Have a great week.